What has happened in one year of GDPR so far? That was definitely one of the most important times for the privacy protection and data protection in uh, Europe, but also in the world. In Europe, uh, we can say that there is much bigger harmonization of the laws and much bigger possibilities to, do, to work over the borders. So when you want to file your complaint, you don't need to go directly to the uh, data protection authority in the country where the business is established that you want to protest against, but you can do it also to your national authority at the place where you are. So if you, are the, if you are from Czech Republic, you can uh, uh, file the complaint against the French uh, shop doing the things online, also to your authority. That's something which started to work, and we may say that this uh, synergy also of the data protection authorities is well visible. But what is, I guess, the most important is that awareness of the data protection has risen very much, and uh, uh, the number of the topics which are right now uh, covered uh, with uh, GDPR GDPR as a general regulation is growing bigger. What impact did the GDPR have on businesses? Uh, for those businesses that were in compliance with the previous regulations that existed in Europe, uh, that was definitely the time to review what's going on, but that was not a big challenge uh, for them to apply the, the, uh, the data protection uh, regulation. At the same time, uh, the companies uh, were able to uh, fulfill their administrative duties at the place where they are established, uh, not in all 28 countries uh, uh, separately. So that would be probably the biggest uh, uh, advantage. But we also have to say that at the same time, a lot of uh, entities, uh, both the commercial entities, but also the, also the NGOs, for example, not uh, the non-governmental organizations, civic organizations, has found that they are not sure that they really have the legal background to, to process the data of the people uh, they had in their records. And what changed for supervisors? For the supervisors, definitely this uh, European approach and the international approach uh, has been more s significant than it was before. While uh, five or six years ago, 95% of cases were purely local. So you were dealing with them with the local perspective, uh, with the national law. Right now, each and every person in the office uh, have to be uh, fully trained uh, with not only uh, knowing the European law, but also knowing how to apply it and also so what does it mean to use the norms, which sometimes appear, for example, in the preamble of the legal act, and what's the role, of, what's the practical role of the judgments of the Court of Justice? And what consequences of the GDPR have to be talked about now? The term which is at the moment the most uh, discussed is of course the term of the sanctions and the enforcement, auto uh, and enforcement actions of the supervisory authorities. But we have to say that this is the part of the story only. The real problem that we have to discuss about is, uh, is GDPR fully, ac fully uh, applicable to the new technological changes and if yes, uh, how we, should, we can do it, how the business models are changing. We were creating the general data protection regulation for the world where the cloud services were the most important. But it's possible that in five or six years the cloud services will not play the same role as they are at the moment. Because the amount of data that have been processed will be so big that they cannot be stored lo uh, locally, if something which is in the cloud can be called locally, but they will be stored in the ubiquitous uh, s systems and ubiquitous uh, distributed uh, uh, resources all over the world. What other challenges do you see talking about data privacy and GDPR compliance? What else is there to and what would your advice be? The biggest uh, challenge uh, for, the, uh, m for our rights uh, is the role of those who want to combine our data coming from different resources uh, in order to predict our future behavior or uh, to prepare some social credit scoring systems. I'm not thinking only about the famous Chinese system which tries to assess uh, fully the person and uh, the uh, position and behavior, but I'm also saying about the very local 
local municipal uh, systems uh, which are prepared in the good with the good will by the municipal authorities in order to fully assess the person who lives in the city so to have the full picture of the person it sounds nice it sounds useful but at the same time it means uh, that we uh, start to be uh, really transparent with everything including our health data our, our financial situation to the administrative bodies uh, and to the uh, state authorities. What would your advice be now? The first uh, thing which I would advise always to the people is not to be bored by the fact uh, that somebody asks us a question. Ask us questions about our own security, our own security online, our own security in the, uh, in the environment where the data is exchanged. Uh, try to ask the questions yourself. Don't be, uh, don't be bored to ask the questions. Don't, be, don't hesitate to ask, what do you do with my data? Where do you get this data f uh, from? What are you going to use it uh, for? And uh, last question, how do you predict the GDPR's development in the future? If you think about the development of the legal text of the GDPR, we may say that there will be no significant changes in the text of GDPR in the next 5-10 years. I don't think that anybody is ready, at the moment uh, ready for the discussion about the new regime for data protection. But there will be definitely a lot of uh, uh, other regulations and other uh, legislation going both from the European level and the national level, which will be in the interplay with the uh, GDPR.